On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Rick here. We are on the ground in downtown San Francisco at the Blockchain Conference San Francisco at the NASDAQ Inter Entrepreneurial Center. Uh, we're really excited to be joined by our next guest, Sergey Lonshakov. Did I get it right? Lonshakov. Excellent. Who's here uh, talking about a project, IRA, which is blockchain meets drones, right? So first, welcome. Hello. Jeff. Absolutely, and Sergey's uh, English is just okay, so we just happened to find a Russian interpreter on the street, so welcome Paul, Car Paul Karpanko from Solaris Labs. Thanks for helping us out. Uh, great pleasure to be here, thanks. All right, so uh, Sergey, tell us a little bit about Project IRA. What, how did it come about and what are the really key components that, that are important to this project? I started IRA project uh, in the last year. Uh, IRA is, uh, is environment for creating autonomous, uh, digitalized at autonomous. And, and uh, this project, you can... Uh, That's okay. Um, so you said it before, it's really about the decentralized autonomous organization. And the use case we talked about is what everyone was talking about on Thanksgiving a year ago, which was Amazon's <laughs> gonna use drones for delivery. Everyone's up in arms, how are you gonna control all these drones? They're all gonna be crashing into one another. And you're really proposing a solution that, that really is a good application for uh, blockchain in this very specific way to have a bunch of drones running in a fleet, not crashing in each other. Я не знаю, насколько можно сегодня судить это хорошее решение, но пока что нет ни одного открытого решения в данной области. So um, we're not really sure about the decision of open airspace quite yet, but that, that's still a question that remains to be answered about open airspace. Um, также нужно понимать, что сегодня есть проблема централизации интернета вещей. Мы пытаемся создать первое решение, которое будет позволять использовать множество дронов в одном едином воздушном пространстве без централизованного сервера. So today there, there, there's a big problem with centralization of the Internet of Things. And so that's what our objective is, is to create a decentralized um, network that really uh, takes the Internet of Things and, and kind, of, com, kind of makes it more um, uh, consensus-based. Также хотел бы сказать, что очень важная составляющая децентрализации это в том, что мы можем избежать посредников оплаты и посредников в управлении дроном. Это сделает решение для вашего бизнеса более дешевыми. So it kind of takes away um, the, the, the key players in the central game, which is uh, air traffic controllers and um, uh, other different kind of human capital that, that, that makes the expenses very high. So this kind of makes it autonomous, takes away um, a, lot, a lot of the hefty expenses that a centralized organization um, would have to run and makes it, basically makes it decentralized, makes it autonomous, that takes away a lot of the human air and the human capital needed for that kind of infrastructure. И последнее. Мы создали впервые систему, в которой человек взаимодействует с роботом напрямую, как равные автономные агенты. Это очень важно для рассмотрения будущего взаимоотношений человека и робота. Это первый случай, когда человек с роботом взаимодействует посредством контракта. Для этого мы используем сети Ethereum и технологию смарт-контрактов. So uh, really this, what we're, we're trying to start is really the first um, real, uh, real connection between a human and a robot. And it, we, it makes them kind of equals on a, the same playing field. And it really sets an open uh, um, space for contracts to happen between robots and humans. What's interesting is you're talking, I'm thinking of, of the Internet of Things examples for self-driving cars all the time, right? We always hear if, if, if the one Tesla can look down the road at the Tesla up the street and sees that they're braking hard, there's an accident or whatever, right? The Tesla behind can use that information, but that can be an inner Tesla to Tesla conversation. If it's a Ford or a GM or a Google self-driving car, this is where potentially your solution comes in because it's autonomous. It's not tied to one solution. There's no central control. And the other thing that comes up in that use case is latency, right? I don't have time 
for the information to go to central control for somebody to say, ah, crash ahead, hit the brakes. You know, it needs to be much faster in a machine to machine way, but still leverage a trusted intermediary. You see, this is some of the types of applications for IRA. Yeah, yeah, hey, you're right. Хочу сказать, что как работают дроны, они работают как как Тесла. Знаешь, одна говорит с другой. И как это отношение случается, и как это как оно бы через разные компании, как Google и Tesla, как они разговаривают? Смотрите, у нас с вами есть единый внутренний блокчейн организации. Не биткоин блокчейн, не эзериум блокчейн, а блокчейн а, именно этой автономии, которой есть децентрализованный а, air traffic control system и а, множество дронов. Вообще возможно, чтобы этот а, air traffic control system был на каждом из этих дронов. То есть мы избегаем полностью любого, любой централизации. Они достигают консенсуса между друг другом и знают точно, где каждый из них находится. Это стопроцентная в конечном итоге гарантия, что никто из них не столкнется. So basically, like the 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 blockchain can work with any any type of of company uh, of drone, and basically what they're able to do is just communicate with each other to let each other know. Kind of, we're talking with the Tesla that uh, their exact location, and there is not really any any stagnancy in in their location. They know they're able to work really efficiently. And and is the intelligence in the system in the drone? Is it back at some uh, central hub in terms of the communication? in this controlled system, where's the actual communication that's figuring out where it is, figuring out the coordinates, figuring out the, oh my gosh, it might crash, you know, adjust your setting. Where's the actual intelligence, in the drone or back someplace else? Информация хранится на самом дроне, потому что они имеют единый блокчейн внутренней децентрализованной автономной организации. Okay. So it's it's within the actual very drone itself. So on, on the ver very uh, drone itself is the actual blockchain, and the blockchain is decentralized. It's aut autonomous. So it's located on the drone itself. No, на сегодня мы используем данные университета Сан Диего. Проект называется Open Topography. Это очень большой объем данных. Для этого мы выделили отдельный сервер сейчас для использования, но в дальнейшем мы при исследованиях постараемся все полностью перенести на дронов. Но это не значит, что они должны общаться. Просто сервер проверяет, выполняет очень сложные вычисления на карте, на данных топографии, и потом говорит дрону, все, ты можешь лететь, дает ему маршрут. И этот маршрут расходится по всем дронам. То есть все сразу знают, что появился новый маршрут, и о нем нужно знать. So currently there's a server at the University of San, San Diego that is where the system is based on right now. And basically what it does, it, it allows, uh, the server does very complex algorithms that, that if a new drone enters the airspace, all the other drones are able to know, know about it instantaneously. So it's, it's able basically, it's basically able to know automatically how the whole fleet is operating. And right now it's on the server, but the plans are in the future to actually have the drones themselves actually have it. Within themselves. Мы единственное зависим от мощности однополатовых компьютеров Raspberry Pi. Мощности Raspberry Pi. Вот нужно. Как только она повысится, мы сможем их перенести. So as soon as the actual Raspberry Pi, um, the, the 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 sphere of Raspberry Pi advances, the platform itself, that that's when we'll be able to use it on the drones itself. But right now, the the, the Raspberry Pi is not quite advanced yet. Right. So I'm just curious, which came first, the drone problem? or your Project IRA? Or you know, did you come up with Project IRA and then you were looking for something interesting to apply it to, or did you come at it from the drone problem and, th and then build Project IRA for that? Первичный проект AIRA. Drone Employee — это первое решение, которое мы полностью отделили от проекта AIRA, потому что оно стало актуально. 14 декабря вышли новости о том, что в США нужно лицензировать дронов. Вы скачиваете приложение, и после этого можно запускать. И в России такая же проблема, и она будет в каждой стране возникать. Поэтому мы подумали, что в ближайшие полгода мы сконцентрируем внимание и доделаем решение, которое будет бесплатно в использовании, которое, которое может, сможет снизить стоимость, использ, э, стоимость э, взаимодействия дронов.
Так, так что проблема пришла, сначала вы сделали Project IRA, а потом а, пришло проблема с regulation, right? It, so what happened was they, they, they created uh, Project IRA as this uh, decentralized autonomous organization, and uh, the problem came with in 2014 of actual regulation of, of drones and, and drone airspace. And uh, then, then came about the, the implementation of, of this decentralized autonomous organization into the, the drone airspace. Fant it's, yeah. it's a, a fantastic story. You know, I, I really uh, appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to stop by. Um, Paul, thanks for stepping in and helping us out. Sergey, really interesting uh, project you're working on. You know, a year ago when Bezos announced Prime and drone delivery, and I thought it was just a ruse to get on the front page of the uh, the newspaper on the biggest weekend of, of, the, of the Christmas shopping season. Little did I know that it's true and as Moore's Law keeps working on Raspberry Pi and a Mars Law keeps working on Watch Out for the Future. Exciting times ahead. For, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the Blockchain Conference San Francisco in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.